Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on global environment where we look at climate change, loss of biodiversity, scarcity of resources. I am Dr. Amna, I teach political science at Shama Prasad Mukherjee College for Women, University of Delhi. Now in this lecture, we will try to look at the key aspects like loss of biodiversity, climate change, scarcity of resources, which are very significant to understand global environmental issues. This lecture will present an analysis of how how environment is an important aspect not only for domestic politics of nations across but also for international relations looking at the future of the world. So let us understand that in the lecture today this, uh, we have structured in a manner that we will try first to understand and define global environment issues. We will look into their significance and concerns and we will also look into the need to understand the need for effective conservation of natural resources. Biodiversity, by biodiversity we mean the vast varieties of life on earth. It measures variations at the genetic, species and ecosystem level. Biodiversity, we have to understand that it is not distributed evenly on earth. It varies globally and within regions. And then but the biodiversity is a result of 3.5 billion years of evolution. Biodiversity refers to variety of living species on earth including plants, animals, bacteria, fungi. Then at the same time we have to understand that while earth's biodiversity is so rich that many species are yet to be discovered and at the same time many species are being threatened with extinction due to human activities which puts the earth's magnificent biodiversity at risk. One may read more about it at nationalgeographic.org. We have to see that when we look in to talk about data that scientists have estimated that there are around 8.7 billion million species of plants and animals in existence however only around 1.2 million species of have been identified and described so far most of which are insects again from ngc.org we must take into account that united nations has designated 2011 to 2020 as united nations decade on biodiversity. In biodiversity, each species, no matter how big or small, has an important role to play in ecosystem. Various plants and animal species depend on each other for what each offers and these diverse species, species ensures natural sustainability in all life forms. Now, biodiversity has three essential elements. Number one, genetic diversity. Second, ecosystem diversity. Third, species diversity. By genetic biodiversity, it implies that each member of any animal or plant species differs widely from other individuals in its genetic makeup because of large number of possible combinations in the genes that give every individual specific characteristics. Species diversity, we by species diversity we imply species is a basic unit of classification and is defined as a group of similar organisms that mate and produce offspring with another thus share a common lineage. The number of species of plants and animals that are present in a region constitutes its species diversity. Ecosystem diversity that means that there are large variety of different ecosystems on earth which have their own component of distinctive interlinked species based on differences in the habitat. Ecosystem diversity can be described for a specific geographical region or as a political entity such as country, state or even a taluka. So then there are other forms of diversity, alpha diversity, the diversity of each side implying local species pool, beta diversity 
representing differences in species composition among size gamma diversity that is diversity of the entire landscape regional species pool importance of biodiversity is essential to understand biodiversity is very important for human civilization and our surroundings for maintaining balance of the ecosystem in terms of recycling storage of nutrients combating pollution stabilizing climate protecting water resources forming and protecting soil maintaining eco balance looking into the aspect of provision of biological resources biodiversity is very essential in terms of provision of medicines pharmaceutical in terms of providing food for human population and animals looking at ornamental plants wood products breeding stocks diversity of species ecosystems and genes and so on social benefits biodiversity is also essential here in terms of recreation tourism cultural values education research avenues amongst others biodiversity also provides variety of foods for the planet and then it also plays an important role for drug discovery medical resources amongst others now today one of the challenges facing global environment is loss of biodiversity habitat destruction is a major cause for biodiversity loss now this habitat destruction or habitat loss is caused by deforestation overpopulation increasing pollution increasing global warming species are threatened by genetic pollution uncontrolled hybridization gene swapping when we look at coral reefs today there there are news everywhere that how coral reefs are disappearing because of global warming this brings us to another aspect that is climate change deforestation habitat loss over exploitation invasive species pollution exploitation of medically imported plants has resulted from their disappearance for many of their natural habitats example here the pitcher plant to sera all are ruthlessly sought and collected for laboratory work so these are just some examples to show how biodiversity is facing various kinds of threats pollution alters the natural habitat example here how water pollution especially is injurious to the biotic components of estuary and coastal ecosystem toxic waste enters the water bodies this not only pollutes the water but disturbs the food chain insecticides pesticides sulfur nitrogen oxides acid rain ozone depletion global warming all of it are adversely affecting the plants and animal species and which is also having huge influence on the ecosystem balance coral reefs are being threatened by pollution from industrialization offshore mining along the coastal areas noise pollution is the cause of wildlife extinction too when we see example uh, to be presented by a study from Canadian Wildlife Protection Fund that how arctic whales are seen on the verge of extinction as a result of increasing noise of ships particularly ice breakers and tankers then climate change another very important aspect related to loss of biodiversity by climate we understand average weather in a place over many years planet earth has witnessed many variations in the climate since the beginning however in we, when we talk about the contemporary time today climate change has emerged as a non traditional security threat for nations all across when we hear about sea level rise global temperature rise warming oceans news of shrinking ice sheets debates on declining arctic sea ice glacial retreat extreme natural events all of it are presenting ample evidence to individuals and states alike 
on the presence of climate change. Now, what could be the causes of climate change? The primary is the greenhouse gases, which are the chlorofluorocarbons, methanes, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, which have led to depletion of the ozone layer. Then another causes like the volcanic eruption that throw lots of asteroids into the atmosphere and leads to imbalance in the climate variations astronomical causes like variations in solar output related to sunspot activities sunspots are dark and cooler patches on sun which rise and fall in a recurring manner so all of it have led to variation in the temperature of the earth global warming is the gradual heating of the surface of the earth the ocean the atmosphere and this global warming begins with the greenhouse effect greenhouse effect implying increase in temperature because of the earth because of how with the depletion of the ozone layer the sun rays get trapped and the earth's atmosphere and the air becomes hot and warm now today climate change is a global challenge this is why countries have to get together for a sustained dialogue today when we look at climate change there has to be a global push for cleaner healthier energy one has to think about how does one use limit the use of fossil fuels such as oil carbon natural gas and replace them with renewable cleaner sources of energy all while increasing energy efficiency another aspect which is very important for global environment issue is scarcity of resources now scarcity is the limited availability of a commodity which may be in demand in the market or by the commons scarcity by definition also includes an individual's lack of resources to buy commodities the fundamental economic problem of having humans who have unlimited wants and needs in world of limited resources is the main explanation beside for explaining scarcity there are three types of scarcity demand induced supply induced and third structural now when we try to understand scarcity we have to see that how the notion of responsible extraction or sourcing should be embedded in the concept of stability and growth in supply as a response to scarcity uh, this very significant piece of research that one read from wef.org one also has to look at alternatives such as use of natural resources efficiencies of product substitution green technology need for environmental and social best practice in mining and sourcing while looking at the larger debate of scarcity of resources and its implications for global environment global environment is also connected to very significant issue that is the global commons the global commons are the international supranational global resource domains in which common pool resources are found global commons include the earth's shared natural resources according to world conservation strategy a report on conservation was published by international union for conservation of nature and natural resources in collaboration with unesco with the support of united nations environment program and the world wildlife fund and we quote from this resort that is a common is a tract of land or water owned or used jointly by members of the community the global commons include those parts of the earth surface beyond natural jurisdiction notably the open ocean and the living resources found there or held in common notably the atmosphere the only landmass that may be regarded as part of the global commons is antarctica so therefore resource domains or asian uh, areas that lie outside the political reach of any one nation state is a global common international law identifies four global commons namely high seas 
atmosphere antarctica and the outer space and there is a debate also that is with rise of internet world wide web resulting that is the cyber space should this be also referred in global commons when we look at global in oceans today they are it is an interconnected system of earth's oceanic comprising the bulk of atmosphere then at the same time today there are huge amount of reports and news of rise in sea and ocean pollution hazardous waste from industries toxic waste go and pollute the oceans and this pollution of oceans has an impact on the biodiversity the ecosystems that exist within this hydrosphere then we have law of the sea which is about part of public international law governing relationship between nations in respect to navigation rights mineral rights jurisdiction over coastal waters and all of it all these issues are having a bearing for aspects related to climate change biodiversity when we look at the hydrosphere of the earth then when we look at the air the surrounding the atmosphere of the earth which is about layer of gases surrounding the planet and it is retained by earth's gravity now air pollution is becoming again a serious cause and today there is a debate how does one manage the atmosphere of the earth because this air pollution is having a huge impact Uh, implication for climate change for global warming for depletion of ozone layer and thereby also having a huge impact on the biodiversity the outer space that is the expanse that exists beyond the earth and between celestial bodies the debate on judicious use comes here is that is as what mahatma gandhi also pointed out that there is enough in the world for our need but not for greed today resources of the earth are in a situation of exploitation by the human species people do not watch out for how much is left but how much they make or how much they have left to use for themselves then another related aspect for global environment issue is how does one ma- manage the management of global commons because they are related outside the sovereign jurisdiction of any one state and therefore they require some kind of consensus on issues of common governance by international community aspects of management system also has to look at the need to address the complexity of multiple public and private interest today that the state is existing with other non state actors which have a bearing on the climate change issues then unpredictable changes ranging from local to the global level so therefore global governance is necessary humanity is increasingly facing problems and opportunities that may be global in scale yet having local reach transnational problems are cutting across borders affecting us all so therefore when we look at environment it is no doubt when we look at from loss of biodiversity when we look at scarcity of resources when we look at climate change and above all the very big issue of how does one manage the global commons in terms of accountability and responsibility so therefore one need requires a collective thinking that is the challenge for humanity is to overcome the, all these issues which are having existential risk so therefore when we look at resource geopolitics which is about who gets when where and how and no doubt when we look at any kind of politics resources are the key means they are the main motives of global power expansion so therefore they have been focus of interstate rivalry but today this interstate rivalry is becoming much more peculiar because environment is under threat today one cannot ignore the perils that for human interaction is causing to the environment and to add to that water ecology land they all are crucial resources that are no doubt very significant for global politics too then at the same time you know when we look at how today even an unusual global con- common that we say the case of antarctica which is uh, locked in a long standing territorial uh, dispute today there are cases of pollution there are cases of how antarctica is under exploitation and then all of it is also having a profound impact on earth's climate and the ocean systems so therefore 
we know that we have treaties and international norms and regimes in place. This brings us to the last part of our learning that is on uh, mechanisms to regulate the environment and here in the idea of environmental governance via norms, regimes, treaties, institutions needs to be looked at. For example, we have the United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea uh, of 1982 that lays down a comprehensive regime of law and order of the world's oceans and seas. Uh, establishing rules governing all uses of the oceans and the resources. We saw the world debating on UNFCC, Montreal Protocol on substance on that deplete the ozone layer or the Antarctic Treaty System that is uh, from 1961 onward the treaty that sets aside Antarctica as a scientific preserve establishing freedom of scientific investigation and banning military activity on the continent. So all this shows that how today environment has become a very important issue for issues of global governance. When we look at United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goal that is building on the Millennium Development Goals and decisions of United Nations uh, Conference on Sustainable Development in Rio de Janeiro in 12, 2012, it defines 17 sustainable goals and all of the 17 sustainable goals require a sustained global and national co natural cooperation towards the environment. It requires that sustainability is factored in as an important cause and variable in the policy making, in the working mechanism, in production and distribution paradigms and therefore herein global commerce and environment to, to becomes an important agenda. Industrial countries are are causing global environment pro problems. Developing countries also then need to have a look at the long term solution. So therefore, when we look at rainforests, coral reliefs being destroyed, one also has to think about collective responsibility for uh, problems of urbanization, industrialization, growing number of automobiles amongst others. Then when we look at national and global environment issues, government must have to take measures to promote economic efficiencies to promote environmental sustainability, eliminate subsidies and tax credits for doing away with energy subsidies, imposing taxes on fuel and then most important local governments also have to be brought in together while working out avenues to tackle climate change, reuse, rework, recycle, promoting plantation of trees, promoting sustainable alternatives, providing people with incentives to use them so that people can reduce economic and the environmental cost of traffic congestion, motorized vehicle use and also factor in NGOs and civil society in order to work out a holistic balance. So dear learners, the lecture today was about environment. We looked at how biodiversity is, is varied. Biodiversity is a historical treasure, but this sum total of plants and animals, flora and fauna is under threat. So one has to look into causes of the biodiversity loss. From there, a very significant aspect comes that is of climate change. Today, there are ample amount of evidences of climate change. Climate change and global warming are non-traditional security dimensions. This requires collective thinking on parts of nations alike because the threat cuts across border and the related aspect of scarcity of resources one has to therefore work out joint mechanisms, sustainable alternatives, workable solutions in order to think about a collective sustainable future of human civilization on earth. Thank you dear learners for being with us for this lecture. We hope our presentation today has cleared all your doubts and thoughts on the aspect of global environment looking at it from the point of view of biodiversity, climate change, scarcity of resources. Thank you.